There are some big changes coming to Raid Shadow Legends this week that you might not be aware of. The first one I want to draw your attention to is the fact that the artifact storage has been increased from 1300 to 1500 that's a huge change that is a positive one for the community it's not just artifact it also applies to also accessories that's a big one the next not so good information right here is a 10x event that is happening this friday saturday and sunday for those players who are pulling their shots during this week to get some amazing champions the 10x that is coming up will start on November the 10th and you have a 10 time chance of getting Baron from Void Shards Why not the most wanted champion right now can be picked up from um, Ancient Shard, Sacred Shard and also Primal Shard. So if you want a second copy of Gnot or if you missed out on the first one, this is your chance to get this champion who is the most wanted champion in Raid. He's from the Dwarves faction right here if you don't know who I'm talking about and he's an MVP in every content. The Lutu Pro doesn't have it but we do not have Shards to pull on a 10x which is not the best time for you to pull shot there is an event going on with it that's why gnot is right here for you to maybe get from primal or from sacred shots now on saturday the 11th that will be a 10x again for akrisia another crazy void legendary champion she can be picked up from um, void shots on that uh, november the 11th which is a saturday if you're lucky enough to get the 10x chance of getting this champion and then the mountain king another draft faction what is it is it a draft faction draft no that's not mountain king it does look similar to him but this is mountain king right here looks really hard hp based damage dealer right here so if you pick up on the 11th on the saturday from primal and from um, sacred shards and ancient shard now the last one on the sunday you have a 10 times chance of getting um two vault where is it he's not on the void shard i mean he's not the dwarf faction champion two vault can be picked up from uh, void shards while the second champion rotos the lost groom will be picked up from ancient sacred shards or primal shards that's rotos right here for you for those pulling shards on a sunday that's the 10x event that is happening now for the main news that everybody is waiting for that the raid is going crazy about right now i knew raid has been quiet since the ending of this last legendary fusion that something crazy was about to happen and we were all right we were speculating that something great was coming to raid and yes you're correct so what's coming a new legendary champion how can you get this champion a different way you know how we have the void pass right here where you i mean they have the forge pass right here which gives you a bunch of rewards for doing things free to play or if you can get the higher level gold pass it gives you even higher rewards by spending a little bit of money gold pass and um gold pass plus <laughs> that's the way you would look at it this gives you a bunch of rewards right here and at the end you get this legendary um artifacts and all that that's for artifacts forge pass now they have another one new one called champion pass that's the name right i think it's called champion pass and it's a champion that you can get at the end of it and which champion is going to be available you already seen the thumbnail you already seen the information everywhere it's a new champion i wanted to take a look at her skills and see if she's going to be useful it's going to be worth your time or even worth your money for you to get that um, legendary version of this champion so let me quickly switch over and show you her graphics and see her skills and abilities and break it down and see if it's going to be something good her name is xena warrior princess don't get it wrong right here that's a name and this champion can be available through a champion pass which is gonna start it start on the 10th of november and it ends on the 4th of february for those coming to the game by 5th january we won't be able to participate 2024 that is so that's a very very long time for any player playing the game the icon will just be there for you to do activities how champion pass and summoning event that's how you get it so for those going for that you want that so fast champion pass will be the way for you to easily get that champion fast and then she'll be available from um that summoning event that will be happening on november the 13th ancient shards 10x events all these are 10x events um november the 20th from sacred shards and also on thursday november the 30th from ancient shards again these are all 10x events where you can pick up this champion if you're lucky enough yes it's not one of those champions here where when she's been and done as a promo champion right here you cannot get her from shards no she will be available from shards during this time so you might be able to get copies of her if you're lucky enough xena warrior princess what is the deal with this champion let me just go into it and see what her skill is all about i really want to see whether it's going to be worth spending money on or not 
On the A1, this champion attacks one enemy two times. We ignore 3% of the target's defense for each buff on the target. So if they have buffs on them, that's 3% ignore defense. We also ignore shield buff if the target is under two or more buffs. That's a very conditional A1. It's not that bad. She seems like she's going to be a damage dealer. She's already seen like a barbarian um, faction champion and force affinity. Now on the A2, which is on a 4-turn cooldown, when you spend books on it to be on a 3-turn cooldown, that's an AoE skill which will ignore 5% of the target's defense. So she's ignoring a lot of defense when she's doing all this damage for each buff again on the target. So it, that's very conditional and um, ignore defense. Steals 20% of the um, turn meter from each enemy. This effect cannot be resisted if the target is under two or more buffs or debuffs. So that's a very conditional turn meter steal. But if it happens, this champion will be able to get a, her turn again because that turn meter steal 20% from each enemy AoE. If it's a bunch of enemies, she'll just steal 20% from each of them. She might be able to get her turn instantly if it happens. That's something I noticed about this skill right here. Very conditional for it to happen. But against the Hydra, you either already, already have buffs on them or they have a bunch of and debuffs on them. That's the best way. I guess she'll be useful for content like this. Her damage, I think, will be based on, if I was to guess, maybe attack. We'll see. And then for the A3, this champion will attack all enemies again, ignores up to 10% of the target's defense for each buff. That's a lot of conditions on the target. Resets the cooldown of this skill if it kills two or more enemies. So that's a very conditional ignore defense. 10% for each target's defense. I don't know how I feel about all this ignore defense that is very conditional. I don't see why her ignore defense has to be this condition. I guess because it's AoE, we don't know her multiplier set or anything, but we'll see whether that's why she's going to hit so hard because of the amount of buffs that the enemies have, have on them. But the A2 relies on buffs or debuffs though, while this A3 says just buffs. It will also reset the, the skill cooldown if it kills two or more enemies. Conditional skill reset. Now, what about her passive? Passive effect increases this champion attack by 10% for 10% um, every time they use an active skill. Stacks up to 100%. Resets each round. 100% attack increase is crazy. But I guess it has to be best in long going battles. Because if it's a wave 1, wave 2 and wave 3, it will reset each, each time. So it is best when it's for one particular stage. And also has a 50% chance of randomly changing this champion's weak hits to normal, strong or critical hits. So that's almost immune to weak hits. The chance increases by increases to 100% when attack enemies under two or more buffs or debuffs. Who is placing all these buffs or debuffs on the enemies? That's what I'm trying to think about. Because these days in raid, we just go try to remove all buffs from them or place one or two debuffs on them. Hardly, normally, you, you don't see enemies in the content with three or more bo debuffs, or they try to remove it by themselves. So I guess she will try to take her turn before the enemies remove buffs on them or um, their debuffs get expired. For the active effect, fills this champion turn meter by 100% and places 50% increased attack buff on this champion for one turn whenever eight or more buffs are placed on the enemy in a single turn <laughs> all right now i see that particular part who places eight buffs on a single turn okay now i see what i mean so that's if she's about to take her turn and then the enemy already has eight or more buffs i guess it's gonna activate for her to take two turns. We'll have to see this bat this champion in battle and see how this active pass of part of the passive worked. And it's on a three-turn cooldown, cannot be reduced by books. So it's not something that will happen every time. Once it happens once, you have to wait an entire three turns before this passive or this active effect be can be used again. She has an aura of increased attack. Is it in all battles? Yes, in arena battles. So it seems like this champion wants to be used in PvP. Yes, has 
her um, skills does seems like she's best for PvP as a damage dealer. So based on attack, I want to see what she can be used in. But so far from her skills, I don't want to just downplay her. I'm, I don't know much about her. I've just seen this champion for the first time. So until we see her in the battles, that's when we'll see how hard she hits. And then normally these buffs and debuffs kind of makes her a little bit complicated. I mean, sometimes her skills, a good part of her skills will happen. Sometimes it will not happen because the enemies just have one debuff on them or one buff on them. Then it doesn't happen. But she will benefit more when enemies have a lot, a lot of debuffs or a lot of buffs on them. That's what I think about her skills. That's Zina, Warrior Princess. What do you make of this champion? Are you gonna be going crazy for this um, champion pass? I've not ever spent money on the Forge pass, so this one is not about to be an exception. And for those free-to-play players who are coming in thinking, "Oh, get this champion," I don't know what to tell you. Go to the Forge pass. I mean, go to the champion pass in game and see what it takes to get her we'll all be getting some rewards along the way though this is not just um an end game player kind of event we'll all be getting some rewards along the way if you're doing level 1 to level 25 of the champion pass including a sacred shard right i guess that's the consolation price for us and yeah it's a good thing that um Zinia warrior princess is in the game and yeah good job for universal television for partnering plerium to make this happen uh, yeah i think that's all let's see what um champ what content can be made out of her when people begin to pull her from shards and then summon her and use her in content until then i'll just keep my fingers crossed and watch you all get her and tell me how she's working in your game because this is very 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 exclusive champion to be added into the game and i'll see what she can do for us in teams in arena or in general content let me know your thoughts about this champion. Do you think this is a good thing or do you think this champion is just a cash grab? <laughs> Later, guys.